Hello and welcome. Waysafe is a company that makes these really cool innovative hitches that have built-in scales so that you can tell exactly what the tongue weight of the trailer is when you are driving around and once you've loaded it up you can double check. They have uh, a factory here in Linden, Utah near where I live and so they have agreed to give me a tour of their factory. So let's check it out. Hi, my name is Morgan McAllister. I'm the lead product engineer here at Waysafe Trailer Hitches. Today we're going to give Anthony a tour of our Waysafe facility of where we actually manufacture our, our, our ball mounts here. This is the Waysafe ball mount. Uh, it has a built-in scale here on the side that measures the tongue weight of your trailer. So you can balance your trailer correctly um, to be um, safe as you're going down the road. You want your safe tongue weight range should be 10 to 15 percent whatever the gross trailer weight is so if you have a 10,000 pound trailer your tongue weight should be minimum a thousand pounds which is 10 percent and a maximum of 1500 pounds and that's what the beauty of this product is it's a it's adjustable so you can always get your trailer level but again that tongue weight uh, scale on there will help you know exactly if you're balanced correctly so you can tow safe um, here right at the start here we have our offices here this is a uh, we got Liz and Addison. They're our awesome customer service girls. They care about everyone. Every person that calls in, um, they, you know, we're all willing to put in 100% to help the customers out. That's what, you know, everyone here at Waysafe is customer support. You know, even the guys in shipping or, you know, anyone, everyone is there to support the customer. So, that's awesome. Yeah, we do everything we can to support. Um, that was actually Brandon around here. We can walk this way. <laughs> Um, back, back, back behind this wall, that's our sales. We have sales and accounting back there. And then these, this is uh, Brandon Doman's office, our CEO. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't think he's in there, unfortunately. Oh, he is. This is Brandon. Say hi, Brandon. Hey, Brandon. How are you doing? <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Brandon. Nice to meet you. Thank yep. you. And then uh, this is Ashley. She's part of our content marketing uh, manager, Hello. director. <laughs> um, and then we have a few other products and we'll kind of go through them out there. Um, here in this building, we make 100% of our, the Waysafe product with the scale and then the 180 product um, that flips over. We make those 100% here. Um, we use a little bit of outsourcing for our steel just because we're only here for machining yeah. currently. Um, but all of our tow balls, everything's made in-house here. Cool. So then on this side, this is our, uh, this is our uh, shipping and uh, account management and purchasing area. So, and a conference room where we have parties. So we're gonna take you right into the action out here. Just right behind our office is, is our production facility. Oh, how are you doing? This is, uh, this is our awesome girl, Ariel. <laughs> She's, she helps with our uh, account and purchase orders. And so we're right into the warehouse. Now we're going to start and go through each process of how we make our tow valves, how we make the sliders, the draw bars, and it starts back in the back. So we'll walk back there first. This is Andrew. He's our uh, VP of manufacturing. VP of manufacturing. He's he's busy, so we won't take too much time. But thank you, Andrew. <laughs> so everything that we that comes in this door is processed on this machine here. This is a, 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 a very large bandsaw, basically. Okay. So right here, this is a, called aluminum extrusion. This is what we make one size of our draw bars out oh, of. I see. Yeah, so we, we get these processed in uh, usually the either nine foot or 12 foot sections, depending on the drop. This, for example, is a six inch drop. This will cut this down into small about two, about three inch sections that will then be machined on the, on our machines. And we do the same thing with all of our, um, all of our extrusions. We have slider, like our lock plate. Here's our lock plate extrusion. This is what makes the dual hitch lock and keep in. Um, and I'll show you over here. So for example, this is what it gets cut down to. That's a draw bar, it's gonna be an eight inch drop. And then this is our, our 180 sliders. That's the, it, you know, this started out about 12 feet, got cut down to this. Here's our way safe slider. You can see that has the little cutout in there and the gauge will go in here eventually. 
So all of our aluminum gets processed in our three horizontal machines, um, soon to be four. They're, we're just continuing to grow as we, as the demand is growing. I mean, we can't keep up with sales, it's amazing. So these three machines, we'll machine those down until it comes out of product to see, they might be all in packaging. Um, here's, here's a lock plate. So that part that I showed you, the little piece, gets machined to this, assembled, completely assembled in the machine. Here's a finished drawbar. So it goes in with that extrusion, comes out looking like this. It's super clean, very nice. Would that be an this is a 10 inch actually, 10 inch drop right here. Hopefully, I'll have to clean it after my fingerprints on it. And then the next portion of it is our tow balls. We make all of our tow balls in house with stainless steel. Um, these machines will take a four foot bar that looks like this, but four feet long, and machine this into this. That's cool. So this is uh, one of our two inch balls that come with every hitch, and then we also makes our two and five sixteenths uh, for the way safe product, and this one does for our 180 product. So this, this machine makes all of our 180 tow balls. So again, it goes in in a four foot section ball of two and three eighths still machined down to this beautiful piece of work. To me, it's art and engineering put together. Then all, we recycle all the chips. So here's an example of all the chips that come off the, you know, what are all the parts we machine off. Yeah. Um, and then our aluminum chips get put and they get recycled as well. We recycle 100% of all of our material. So that's what this one does. This makes our tow balls, sliders, draw bars, all in this half. Everything comes in that door, and then it goes through this door to assembly and uh, final assembly and into inventory. So once we're in here, obviously we do a lot of warehousing as well. Um, of, these are some pre-cut extrusions of the drop lengths and sliders and way safes that we've already pre-cut that we're storing in here until our machine has capacity to cut them. So that's what a lot of the storage is and boxing. But over here, this is our assembling area where we assemble it and package it. So these come directly from, let's see if I can grab one of these without fingerprinting it. So this came directly from that station over there. It's assembled, it has the gauge in it has all the plugs and it's ready to go to be boxed. Basically what they'll do from here is they'll sticker these with our logos. This is a way safe, this is a 180. We'll get a way safe and a 180 sticker. Then they'll match it with the draw bar and a key locking pin assembly and we'll package it here in this U shape into our packaging. Once it's packaged, they are, everything gets put into our inventory of our different, different sizes. We have four different drop lengths, a 10 inch, an eight inch, a six inch, and a four inch. But then we have three different sizes of shanks. So two inch, two and a half, and three inch, okay. but all with different ratings. Two inches rated up to 12,500 pound trailer. Two and a half is rated up to 18,500 pound trailer. And then the three inch for the new F-350 Super Duties are rated for a 21,000 pound trailer. Huge, it's crazy. But you know, we, we, we were one of the first ones to offer a hitch for that vehicle because we we just changed our fixturing, ready to go. Right. Yeah, it gets placed over here. And then as orders come in or as dealers demand, it's either palletized, sent off to a wholesale distributor or a small parcel sent out. And everything goes out this door. So in that door, out this door. Okay. And this is just more of all that Yep, product. yep. So, um, we do have a kind of a more eco line of chrome plated tow balls. These are machined here and then we have a, we outsource the chroming. Um, this is a cheaper line just because chrome will eventually uh, scratch and it could rust, but visually it looks really clean <laughs> for at least the use, but our stainless steel is a higher premium line. Contrast, we have the stainless steel over here. Yeah, so this is a stainless steel. So this will keep this look for basically ever because it has that uh, corrosion resistance built into the material. Right. So, yep, tow ball. So they just match everything up to be whatever skewed you or you know the person ordered, and they'll sticker the back of the box saying, "Hey, this is a two inch, or two and a half, or a three inch shank, 
Then this is the drop length. And then we have a different box for way safe or 180. Uh, now here's the 180 box. And that has the same sort of sticker layout. And again, everything gets bought, packaged, assembled, put into inventory, then taken off by our shipping team, which we have awesome shipping team that will either put it on um, a pallet, like I'll show you some of these over here. So either go in a pallet or it's wrapped in black just for security and it's completely attached, or it will go out in a, a way safe box, kind of like those, they're just not closed. Yeah, and it goes out the door and to the customer's hand. Awesome. Yeah, that's, that's, about that's it. yeah, that's our main <laughs> what we do here. Yeah. And then we also have another building. So this is building A, we have building C, that's where the magic happens with research and development. We have for my offices, we have our prototypes for products I can't show you. <laughs> <laughs> At least not yet. Um, we're coming out with the fifth wheel hitch and um, a lot of other new products. And we have our own little R&D warehouse with machinery and stuff. What about your weight distribution hitches? Those are pretty different. Yeah, so those are actually assembled over here. So because we're not, we don't have steel facility here, we outsource that. But we do all the assembly. Hey, we can take you over there. Let's go over there. And you can, we can show you our uh, inventory of metal back here too. <laughs> See all those extrusions? Oh, yeah. Yep. So those are different sizes, different lengths, just depending on the material supplier, however long it gets it. Here's Ashley again, a great, great Ashley. So yeah, so this is our yard that you know we have surveillance on. But yeah, so we have our way safe 180 uh, drawbar extrusions, and then we also have a, you know raw bar of stainless steel so that's machined. So all this will be machined within the next couple of months, and then you know we'll keep it stocked up with yeah. more, obviously. But so those long bars way over there, those are the balls. Yeah, those are the balls. Oh, yep. Okay. So yeah, so they're quite long. Yeah, so they, so they come 12 foot lengths, and then that the saw that we saw at the beginning, the band saw, will cut them down to four foot, and then it will go into the machine at four feet or four to five, just depending. Right. But in this building, we have our assembly. I don't know if our assemblers are here right now but we'll, we'll find out okay. <laughs> so here is where we assemble parts of the weight distribution hitch just depending on where it's at so here's the lower pivot arm examples mm -hmm. um, and they get assembled on these two packages and they are placed over there in inventory so there's not a lot going on right now just because they're not here at this hour I guess <laughs> I don't know. Hey, here's some assembled ones over here so yeah we get these brought in from different suppliers, just depending on what process. We have stuff that, that are cast on here, forged. So those will be joined with the top portion, set up pretty like this, and then this will be boxed. This awesome young man over here is doing our spring arms, stickering them and packaging them. And just depending on demand, we have more or less employees, just wherever it's right. at. As far as popularity is concerned, would you say that the uh, distribution hitches are like the minority of what you sell? So right now, since we just released this, you know, 2020, eventually, so right now our top seller is the, the waste safe adjustable ball mount with the 180. But we're seeing that weight distribution hitches are coming up and eventually we're going to see weight distribution pass everything else. We're pretty, yeah. pretty confident in that. But right now it's obviously we're building up our weight distribution hitch and then yeah those are still just going full bore. When it comes to towing in general, would you say that weight distribution hitches are typically used for RVs? If it's something that has a, a large side? You know, yeah, for the most part. So weight distribution hitches do a few things. Is it's really good with the, the trailers with big sidewalls, so really good with RVs, but then also some cargo trailers. Right. Um, as long as uh, it has the A-frame and it has a place to mount the brackets to, our weight distribution hitch will work with it. But what our weight distribution hitch does differently than anyone else's is it has that built-in gauge. So one is you know if you're safe on tongue weight, because that's what's going to prevent most of your trailer sway, most of your towing problems that you might encounter. Mm -hmm. But with heavy tongue weight, it makes your you lose weight off your front axle of your towing vehicle because your back axle kind of acts as a teeter-totter or a, a, fulc a fulcrum point. And what a weight distribution hitch is supposed to do is the weight that was lost off that front axle should move it back on because that weight's added to your back axle as well. 
So now your back axle is wearing more and then your steering control is less because of that light weight. But it pushes it back on, but then also takes the, whatever the original tongue weight, let's say it was a thousand pounds, and it'll actually split that between your back axle of your tow vehicle and your axle of your trailer. So now your total vertical weight on your trailer, I mean on your, on your vehicle is only 70 to 80 percent of the, whatever the tongue weight is. Right. So it actually decreases the amount of tongue weight or total vertical load. So to, to count the opposite of that is about 30 percent of the weight of the tongue is sent back to the trailer axle. That's correct, yes. And again, it all depends on those lengths that are in our app. Because um, if it's a really long trailer, it might not be 30 percent, might only be 20 percent just because of the, the static, the, the, the different body si sizes. So. But for the most part, it's usually between 80 and 70 percent is what the towing vehicle sees, and then the 20 to 30 percent is actually put back on the axle of the trailer. Yeah. And then again, the main thing is that weight that was lost off your front axle. That's where you get loose steering, which can cause sway, braking control. 70 percent of your car's braking is your front axle, so you lose 300 pounds off your front axle. Now it has a lot more chance of skidding and not control. You know, and, and what you're describing is applicable even if you have installed airbags or whatever suspension components to make the truck level. Exactly. Right, still distributed. Yeah, airbags will actually make it worse. It makes that back actually even more of a pinpoint. Um, but we actually recommend using both with our weight distribution hitches. That's when you get the best towing performance with your vehicle. And that's because the weight distribution hitch will return that weight but you're still gonna see some weight on your back of your vehicle, you know, that 70 to 80%. But if you use airbags with it, now you're bringing your tow vehicle back to stock height riding. And that's when the alignment's right on the money because it's aligned when it's at stock weight. Your alignment's on, you, all of your joints and your steering um, is on the, you know, is how it's supposed to be. So you're now gonna be going straight down the road. Your braking control is all uh, equalized or distributed correctly. So. Yeah. We, uh, we would recommend using both if you have it, but it works just as good. Well, it's going to work better than anyone else's, even if you don't have airbags. So the traditional uh, weight safe hitch that is not weight distribution, that would typically just be used by virtually any other towing situation where it's maybe a lower profile trailer, or small utility trailer, et cetera. Exactly, yeah. So any yeah, utility trailer where you need to haul something to the dump or people using their lawnmowers, you know, Usually trailers like that. I mean, you definitely can use it for uh, for uh, RV, but you won't get that sway control. That's something I missed in there. Is the sway control is because of those spring arms on there. There's such high friction points in there. It actually takes. I kind of ran the math using some friction numbers and a 10,000 pound trailer. It actually takes around 1,300 foot pounds to change the angle between the truck and the trailer. So just think of like like a wrench. If it was a foot long, you'd have to put 1,300 pounds on it to try changing the angle between the truck and the trailer. Okay. Now, with the steering being so far in front, you don't notice it steering, but when a big gust of wind comes and hits the side of your trailer, it's trying to push your truck side to side back there, but it has to overcome 1,300 foot pounds before it's going to affect your steering. Okay. That's the beauty. And that's a general number with a 10,000 pound trailer. Now, if you have more than 1,000 pounds of tongue weight, it's going to increase that. I had a guy come in with 2,000 pounds of tongue weight. And he says, I've never had any sway with this hitch. It's amazing. I'm like, well, yeah, it's probably seen about 3,000 foot-pounds of torque that it has to overcome, so you're not going to see it. So, mm -hmm. But again, that all is dependent on lengths, weights, and, and your And then the trade-off would be with the weight distribution hitch is just the inconvenience of the extra steps when you're hooking it up. Yeah, yeah. It is a little bit more because you have to get the spring arms on there. Um, but if you know the tricks of the trade, you just use your tongue jack, get them on there, right. and you're ready to go. So it's, it is an extra step, but... Just depends on what kind of towing performance you want your vehicle to have. Right. Yeah. When I put my trailer on my weigh safe hitch, I noticed that the weight continued to climb about 100 to 200 pounds over the course of five minutes or so, and then it stopped climbing. Mm -hmm. So why is that? And is that expected? Yeah, that's a great question. Yeah, it is expected. So what, how we build our gauges is when you're going down the road, you're going to get hit, hit divots and bumps. That's going to send huge spikes. What makes our gauge special is we have a small, it's called the orifice reducer. It limits the flow of oil going through the gauge. And that's for when you're going down the road and hit big bumps, it doesn't just spike and yield the gauge immediately. And so kind of a side effect of that is sometimes, especially at lower weight, if you're under, you know, five to six, to even 700 pounds sometimes, is it will go up, but then over time, the volume, the flow is still 
because it's a lighter tongue weight, it still takes a minute for it to get up to its actual PSI of the, of the basically the volume, the fluid of the hitch. So it's, you really would notice that if you're down like 300 pounds of tongue weight, is you might put it on there and you're like, it's not reading anything. Just wait and it'll go up. If you want to make it go faster, you, you, can, you can actually just jump on it. And that gives the, the force enough to go pat, let the volume go through the orifice reducer faster and it gets to your tongue weight quicker. Because right. when it backs down, it has plenty of pressure to go through it, but when it's increasing, that's when you have a problem with that. Great. Thanks for explaining that. That makes more sense. Uh, I think that covers it from everything I can think of. <laughs> awesome. Okay, man, that's us. And we have a couple more buildings just for more staffing, you know, engineering and marketing is. But that's right. these are our main uh, sources right now. Okay. Well, thanks for showing me around. No problem. Thank you. So I used my weight safe hitch to weigh my RV on mm -hmm. the truck. And the tongue weight was right around 1,000 pounds. And then I went to a Love's truck stop and measured the truck and the trailer combined. And then I uh, unhitched the trailer and just measured the truck's weight. And then when I looked at the difference in weight between uh, when I was weighing the truck with the trailer on it and not, the rear axle actually showed a difference of weight of about 1,300 pounds. So why would the, the weigh safe hitch show 1,000 pounds of weight but the Love's truck stop weigh scale, the cat scale, mm -hmm. showed more like it looked like a difference of 1,300 pounds? Yeah, that's a great question, a great thing that happens. We have people calling about this all the time. So I can try to explain best I can with this little model of what's happening here. So when I put tongue weight back here on the back of your hitch, you know, if I say that this is a thousand pounds, you know, this, you seem, it would look like this whole vehicle should see a total of a thousand pounds of vertical weight, and that's true. But what happens with your axle weights is what's, what you're seeing on there. So when I'm putting weight back here, you can see the back axle acts, acts as a teeter-totter. And whenever you put any weight back here, you're going to lose weight off your front axle. Um, that's where a lot of people have problems with steering control. And that's when we'd recommend a weight distribution hitch. But if you're using a normal hitch, um, you lose weight off your front axle. But where does that weight go? You know, it gets transferred to the back axle. So if you were to actually look at both of your weights, you would have seen that your front axle was lighter than it was stock. I did see that, yeah. And then you, you, that increase of weight is to your back axle. So that's just because this is a big lever pushing down here, lifting up on the front of your truck. Not enough to lift it off the ground, of course, but that weight is transferred to being on your back axle. And as well, you do have the original 1,000 pounds of tongue weight, so that's why you're seeing that 1,300 pounds. Yeah. So there's Roughly 300 pounds in this case transferred back. Right. Usually it's about 20 to 30 percent of whatever your original tongue weight is, is how much you lose off your front axle. Again, it do, does matter. Uh, it does matter uh, what your wheelbase is. Oh, so see. if you were like on a Jeep where it's super narrow, you might see a 50 or you know 40 or 50 percent loss off your front axle. Yeah. And that's why when you see Jeeps and stuff, they are completely squatting when they're trying to tow anything. But like a long wheelbase truck would see way less. Yep. And so the truck manufacturer, when they are specifying the tongue weight capacity of their truck, I assume they are taking into consideration this very effect. That's exactly right. And that's why, you know, a half ton is, you know, it's only rated for a little bit because it completely lifts up the front <laughs> just because of their light suspension. And, yeah. you know, but it, that's exactly right. Uh, okay. And that's why 2,500 pounds and 3,500 pounds are, they put a lot more weight in the front. So even if you do lose that weight, it's it's very small percentage of the actual weight of the front yeah. axle. So that's why set, uh, diesels can also pull more because their engines are a lot more heavy. Yeah. And so they just put on a stronger rear axle or rear axle and suspension to accommodate for that. Gotcha. So that's that's what's so awesome about a weight distribution hitch though is with our calculations because we have the gauge built right into it we in our and we put in the three measurements the measurements between you know the back axle of the towing vehicle oh i pushed the horn on here <laughs> the measure between here and here is that fulcrum arm that lifts up the front of the vehicle so that's one measurement that we plug into our app and then where these spring arms are connected here um i guess onto the back of your on your towing vehicle that's another dimension that matters, and then the length of your of your tow vehicle matters, and so we can t perfectly. The length of your towed vehicle, the trailer. Oh, sorry, the tow, the trailer, the trailer, the, the trailer yeah. being towed. 
Those three measurements are what goes into lifting up the front of your truck. And when you put the weight distribution hitch on there, we can tell you exactly, you know, once you hook on the spring arms, this is no longer reading tongue weight. It's reading a resultant force of these spring arms pulling down on the tongue of the trailer. Yeah. And we found an algorithm that we can tell you exactly what that resultant force needs to be to perfectly push that 20 to 30% of tongue weight lost off your front axle back on, but then also takes this thousand pounds of force here and distributes it between your back axle of your tow vehicle and then the axle of your trailer. And usually it's between 70, 30 or 80, 20, just depending on these measurements. And so now with the weight distribution hitch, your front axle is at stock weight and your, um, your total vertical weight from your trailer, instead of being a thousand pounds, is normally 800 to 700 pounds. So that's what's so magical about a weight distribution hitch. Now, one thing question I have is on your weight distribution hitch here, you have where the normal ball would normally sit way over here and mm -hmm. you've, you've extended it out this way and now the ball is way over here. You've got this scale in between. Mm -hmm. Why is that so large? Can't it be squished? It's a great question. So the reason why is this portion here, we call this the lower pivot arm. Um, it, it hooks to this lead screw and this is your adjustment system. With anyone else's you know, weight distribution hitch is to adjust the angle of these spring arms you have to take huge bolts out and put in spacers and washers to try aiming them the right direction. Mm -hmm. But we wanted to take that away so you can get to the distributed tongue weight number. And so in order to do that and make the force low enough for a, a bolt, mm -hmm. we had to ex extend this pivot arm basically so you can now adjust it while it's hooked up. You don't have to take it all apart to adjust it. So That's, other weight distribution hitches that are shorter there they don't have that adjustment ability? Co correct, uh, at least while you're hooked up. You can take it apart. The, the bolts are usually torqued to 320 foot pounds each. So you have to take those off. Then you have to adjust the head, slide it forward backwards, put in little spacers and adjust the little screws, and then try putting it back together and you're, it's still a guessing game because mm -hmm. you only have an eighth inch of a washer to change the angle, where ours has an infinite resolution where you just adjust the the lead screw pulling it up until you get to that distributed tongue weight number. Yeah. So to to like the short answer for this yep. would simply be to have to the distribution or the adjustability, I should say, um, built into the hitch without having to unhitch it. That's why. It's exactly. <laughs> but there's some awesome benefits to it being this long. Yeah. Is you can lower your tailgate. You can't do that with most, if not uh, any okay. other people. I mean, can you lower your tailgate with your trailer? Do you know? No. The, it hits the, the it hits the jack. So this will take that away. You can totally lower your tailgate as long as it's not too high. The only thing it'll hit is this, if it's if you need it in the rise position, for example. Right. But for the most part, you can lower it right back down. And another thing this does, because it's so long, when you're taking turns, you can actually make sharper turns because your wheel line, wheel um, base of your trailer follows more closely in line with your wheels of your uh, pulling vehicle. Yeah. Because it's now pushing the trailer to the left more before turning right or yeah, vice versa. So those two things alone, that's actually the main reason why people buy our hitch is the length uh -huh. because they can lower their tailgate and throw their dogs and their gear in after they're ready to go instead of having to put it in and plan beforehand and then close it. And then once they hit the trailer, kids don't touch the tailgate because they ding their tailgate. Mm -hmm. That's an expensive fix. Right, right. So. Awesome. Well, thanks for clarifying. Yep. That was a really interesting tour, and I hope that was informative to give you a better idea of the, what the WaySafe company is all about and how they manufacture their hitches. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.